Hey guys, we are back with video 12 of this series. Today we are looking at VYM. We're going to try to determine how much VYM we need to hold in our portfolio to have only VYM pay us $1,000 a month. And we've already completed 11 different ETFs in this series, and most of these ETFs were designed or built to be able to pay you an income. Most of them were higher than 5% yield. This is our first ETF that is going to be less than 5%. At the end of this series, after about 30 videos or so, we are going to put all these videos in a playlist and you can watch each and every one, pick and choose, or you can watch all of them. And if you head down into the comments, you can suggest an ETF that is not currently on this list. And currently we have SVOL and SDIV suggested from the comments. So what do we do? How do we determine how much of this ETF we need to own to hit that $1,000 a month? Well, what we do is to just summarize, we look at each ETF, we head over to their webpage and see how are they reaching the dividend yield that we determine in step three. What are they actually doing to hit give us a dividend yield or give us a certain amount of income or distribution? And in step three, we head over to Seeking Alpha and come to one solid dividend yield number. Take that dividend yield number, head over to our calculator in step four, over here, our compound interest calculator, put our ETF in question in the calculator and determine how much of it we need to own to hit $1,000 a month. And then in step five, we compare the ETF to an S&P 500 index fund. So over on VYM's webpage, VYM is Vanguard's high dividend yield ETF. They, pay, they charge you 0.06% to be able to manage this fund. So it's a fairly low expense ratio. It's not the lowest, but is not, definitely not uh, considered that high. So what is VYM actually doing? Well, on the product summary uh, here on their page, they seek to track the performance of the FTSE High Dividend Yield Index, which measures the investment return of just regular common stocks of companies characterized by high dividend yields. So what is this right here? What is what is considered as a high dividend yield according to Vanguard. We'll get to that here over on Robinhood. I want to show you what the dividend yield would be. Provides a convenient way to track the performance of stocks that are forecasted to have above average dividend yields. And it follows a passively managed full replication approach, full replication of this FTSE high dividend yield index. So let's go over to Robinhood and just take a peek at their, uh, at their current holdings. Vanguard's High Dividend Yield ETF or VYM. Come down here, we can see that their top holdings, that none of them are weighted above 4%. So the top five are Johnson & Johnson, Exxon, JP Morgan, Procter & Gamble, and Chevron. So what are the yields or the dividend yields of each of these securities? Well, Johnson & Johnson, we come down and their current dividend yield is a 2.64%. ExxonMobil, their dividend yield is a 3.65%. JP Morgan, their dividend yield currently is a 3.36%. Procter & Gamble's is 2.55 and Chevron is 3.5%. So you can see the trend here coming back over to their webpage characterized by high dividend yields. Well, their top five funds have yields anywhere from about 2% to less than 4%. So that is their definition of high dividend yields. Well, what is the overall distribution yield? What is the overall that VYM is going to be paying you on, I believe it is a quarterly basis? Coming over to Seeking Alpha's page, I really like Seeking Alpha because they just have a lot of information, very easily accessible. So the current 12 month trailing yield settles around 3%. So right between that 2 and 4% uh, yielding number that most of their funds probably have between a 2 and 4%. So what does that look like historically? So if we click on dividends and go to the sub tab dividend history, it looks like they are paying their dividends out on a quarterly basis. So over the past 12 months, they've paid from 75 cents, 94, 66, and 85 cents. So we'll go ahead and use that uh, 3% number. You can see that there's a slight trend upwards here on their uh, current payouts, but that could also be that 
the price of the fund is also increasing and there is their dividend yield staying flat or increasing let's take a take a peek you can see at 2020 the dividend yield shot up because the share price went down but it looks like over the course of the past five years we're pretty solid hanging right around that three percent dividend yield number so that's what we'll use in our calculation coming over to our compound interest tab if we type in VYM, that is the fund that we are using, this calculator was built to compare two funds. We're just gonna focus on portfolio one, VYM. Under their fund stats, it is a 3% dividend yield and a 0.06% expense ratio. And we can play around with the growth and contribution numbers. Uh, we'll, we'll put in an annual growth rate of, let's say, down here, if we take a look at their price performance over the past 1 to 10 years, cumulatively, uh, I would be safe to say, let's, let's hit a 6% annual growth rate oh, with a $500 investment per month in VYM with reinvesting the dividends at $1,000 initial deposit or principal. Coming over to our portfolio value after 10 years, this is what you could expect to have with VYM with these inputs. And this is the type of income you could expect to receive with VYM. And this dividend yield number was wrong for SPY, but we're not focusing on SPY, so don't really focus on these numbers. But this is what you can expect over the course of 10 years with a $500 a month monthly addition at a 6% cumulative annual growth rate. But coming down here, uh, the purpose of uh, step four was to find how much VYM we need to own, and we need to own around $400,000 at our 3% dividend yield number to hit that $1,000 a month. And we would need $40,000 of VYM to hit $100 a month, and $2 million of VYM to hit $5,000 a month. And last but not least, let's head over to a Portfolio Visualizer and compare VYM to SPY. So VYM versus SPY with $500,000 invested, we are reinvesting our dividends and we'll take a peek at what it looks like without reinvesting dividends. If we were to analyze, come down to the graph, this right here at the fund inception date of the newest fund beginning in November 2006, if we had half a million dollars and we just let it ride over the course of that's going to be about 14 years, SPY would have outperformed, but only slightly. Coming up to the cumulative annual growth rates, VYM with dividends reinvested is about 7.9%. And SPY is about 8.9% with dividends reinvested. And this is what it would look like after about 14 years with no new money invested. Coming up and not reinvesting dividends, let's take a peek at what that would look like. If we were to pay ourselves with that 3% dividend yield, if we were to take that out and pay taxes on it and then use it with half a million dollars, the CAGR number or the cumulative annual growth rate, your fund would still grow at around 4.6%. SPY taking out that 1.5% dividend yield. SPY would be growing at 6.7%. This would be your final balance and SPY st still would outperform. However, VYM is paying you more in dividends. So how much are they actually paying you? Well, you can see over the course of about 14 years here, VYM with half a million dollars and with it continually increasing over the course of 14 years, it, let's take a peek at 2021. In 2021, your 3% dividend yield would be paying you around $30,000 over the course of 12 months, which is around $2,500 a month. So that concludes our analysis for VYM. You would need around $400,000 to hit $1,000 a month. If you don't see an ETF on this list, head down into the comments and I'll, I will add that ETF to our comment suggested section. And if you want access to this compound interest calculator right here, head over to Patreon and you can download the calculator. With that, thanks for watching.